Hey viewers, got ourselves a 2008 Suzuki XL7. Customer brought it in and said that the uh, brakes are making a slight grinding sound. I took it for a ride. I think our problem is going to be pretty obvious. So let's have a look. As you can see, we've got all four wheels pulled apart. Uh, not as bad as I expected. I thought we would definitely find some uh, metal against metal uh, rubbing here, uh, but in this case we didn't. It appears that we just have a pretty excessive amount of rust buildup on the inside of the brake rotors. So I've already contacted a customer, kind of made them aware of the problem, give them the choice to uh, uh, you know, go ahead and fix it now or, or fix it later. Um, uh, fortunately, he uh, decided to go ahead and fix it now, so we're going to do a four wheel brake job. I'm going to show you how we go about that on your Suzuki XL7. All right, we're going to start here on the front passenger side. Uh, driver side is going to be exactly the same, so I'm going to show you how to do one front brake and one rear brake, uh, pads and rotors, and uh, that should be enough to get you going. So we're going to remove the brake caliper. It takes a 14 millimeter socket. Reach in here and hold the brake caliper pin. Uh, for this, we're going to be using a 17 millimeter wrench. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take that off. Got the top one there. And then go ahead and do the same thing down here on the bottom. Now that we got that off, we're going to go ahead and just lift our brake caliper bracket or our brake caliper here off the bracket. So make sure it's loose. Should be able to just pretty much wiggle that straight up off. May have to reach in and pull the caliper back to push the pistons in slightly. In which case we did. So that wiggles right up off there. Now don't just leave the brake caliper hanging there. Go ahead and get yourself something to uh, just wire tie that up out of the way for you. We use these reusable, uh, these reusable ties here. They work pretty good. I think I got them at the Walmart uh, one time. Uh, I think originally they came coated with like a red coating on them, but they work pretty good. You can use uh, use a zip tie or coat hanger or whatever you have, but just get the get the weight off the hose so you don't damage the hose. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and, and loosen up these brake caliper bracket bolts. You're gonna wanna use an 18 millimeter. Go ahead and crack those loose. Now from the factory, those bolts are held in with Loctite. So they can be pretty tight. So don't be surprised if you have to put a little, little bit of gumption behind those. Then remove your caliper bracket. Now that your caliper bracket's off, we're going to want to take this torque spit here out of the brake rotor. It's going to take a P30 socket. That should come right out for you. Now that we've got the bolt out of the brake rotor, we're going to want to take the brake rotor off. 90% of the time here, these are going to be frozen to the hub. Uh, well, at least here in New York. A couple options. You can take a hammer and uh, you can just go along the hub face here and you know, start, start whacking out of there, you know, pr pretty hard, and that'll, that'll vibrate it loose. You can come from the back side with a heavier hammer if the rotor's junk, and uh, just give that a whack off. Here in the shop, we use uh, what we call an air hammer, and uh, this is gonna give it enough vibration around the face of the rotor here, uh, right on the hat, that it's just gonna vibrate it right off. As you can see, that was froze on there pretty good. But once we get it loose, it comes right off. So you can see on the inside of this rotor, we've got some pretty excessive buildup. And this is where this is where we were getting our grinding noise. So you can see the reason that we're doing this. Pretty, pretty nasty. It's definitely time to time to replace these when that uh, when the facing starts just chipping right off the brake rotor. Uh, granted, some of this stuff vibrated off from uh, rattling on it with the air hammer. Every time the brake pads would contact those, uh, he'd get some pretty heavy scraping and grinding noises. So you'll see when we tear the back apart. The back appears to be worse, but uh, we'll find out here shortly.
So now that the rotor's off, we gotta let the cleanup begin. Now despite the fact that that rotor was frozen on there severely, the hub face on this really isn't that bad. This just has a little bit of really light surface rust. What you'd wanna watch here on the hub face is you'd wanna watch to make sure there's not actually chunks of rust. What, that, what, what problem that'll uh, cause is when you put the new rotor on, it'll make it so the rotor doesn't sit on here flat essentially, and it will give you some run out in the rotor making your brake pedal pulsate. So on this one, it's gonna clean up pretty easy. We're gonna use uh, just a little bit of uh, your standard brake parts cleaner, a wire brush, and just go around this hub and just clean it up, get it ready for the new rotor. So that's pretty easy. If there was excessive amounts of rust on there, you'd have to take some different steps. We got some different special tools we use here to clean around the wheel studs um, and, and to get the rust off. But that, that's the most important thing. You have to get all the rust off the face of the hub uh, to ensure that your new rotor will sit on there perfectly square. All right, what we're gonna do next is we gotta push in the pistons uh, on the calipers here. You're gonna find a lot of controversy on this on the internet. Um, in a perfect world, no rust. Typically what you would do is uh, you would open up the brake bleeder, push the pistons in, close the brake bleeder, finish the brake job, uh, bleed a little bit of air out that you may have gotten trapped in there when you're done. Um, you know, we deal with what we have at hand. Uh, if we touch brake bleeders here that are more than a couple years old, you know, they're rusted solid, they're gonna break. So to save a lot of aggravation and issues, we just push the pistons in. I've done tens of thousands of brake jobs. I've never had an issue with uh, master cylinder going bad from pushing the fluid back in it or an ABS valve or, or anything for that matter. Not to say that it can't happen, the percentage is probably quite low. We're going to use this tool here to push the uh, caliper pistons back in. You can use a, a multitude of different things, two C-clamps. Uh, most people will use uh, C-clamp vice grips to go inside the piston and push them back in the housing. On these dual piston ones, the only thing to remember is if you're only pushing one piston in at a time, you can pop the other piston out. So it's best to do them both at the same time or hold one and then push one in uh, or something along that. So we're going to use this tool. I'm just going to stick a, stick a bar in here to take up the space. We're just going to go ahead and push these pistons back in. Now what, no matter what you're using, uh, these pistons should push in quite easily as these ones did without any force. If you got to force them in, you better buy a new caliper. Now the other thing that's important here too is to make sure that the caliper is clean. So just go ahead and use your wire brush ad and get rid of all the debris. And we're gonna wanna make sure that this face right here where the, where the brake pad itself sits, again, make sure there's no chunks of rust. Uh, this, one, this one here is pretty clean. The scar's uh, on the newer side here. So we're just gonna use our brake clean. We're gonna use our wire brush and just go ahead and get the surface rust off there. And you'll see why. We're gonna lube this surface uh, between the caliper and the pad to prevent any brake squeal. So we wanna clean that area. Go ahead and clean out the inside of the rotor. And again, on the faces of the pistons, we're gonna to wanna to clean those off too. Then just rinse everything off when you're done. Now, if there was chunks of rust on there, we'd have to go in with a, uh, oh, you could use a, we've got some special tools here in the shop, but you could go in at home with a, with a square file, uh, you know, and just, just, you know, just file off all that rust, chip it out of there, and uh, make sure that surface is clean and flat. If it's too rusted, too rotted, too pitted, uh, just go ahead and pick yourself up a couple new calipers. Okay, now it's time to take a look at the caliper bracket itself and get our new pads ready. You're gonna wanna go ahead and get your old pads out of there. Now, these things can be really stuck sometimes. You might have to get a hammer and tap them out of there. So we got the old pads out. Well, a couple things we're gonna to wanna to look at. Is our pins free? And these are. These should move very easily by hand. And the other thing you're gonna to wanna to check, just pull them out, make sure they're looped. Do the same on both sides. These ones have a pretty sufficient amount of lube on them, so we're gonna leave them how they are. Now, you can over lube these. I've seen in rare instances where you get too much lube on them, there's not enough air space down in the bracket here where the pin goes. And as these heat up, it actually works like a hydraulic piston, forcing the pin back out, causing the brakes to lock up. So if you do put lube on them, you find that there's not enough lube on these, 
just lube them lightly on the side. You'll see that they have three, uh, three flutes cut in them to allow the air to escape. So just put a light amount of lube on them, stick them back in. Uh, the other thing to look at is to make sure that none of these uh, none of these boots that protect the pin, make sure they're intact, make sure they're not torn or, or have holes cut in them. Because if they are, you're going to have to buy a caliper pin uh, boot kit. Next, we're going to pull the hardware off. Make sure you buy a high quality pad that comes with new hardware. And if it doesn't, make sure that you buy new hardware. Uh, quite often these can be bent, damaged, rusted, uh, broken. What we find here as you'll see, we're gonna clean this up. The majority of brake pad failure we have here in New York is the fact that the pads actually get rusted into the bracket. So what'll happen is you can see how these are rusty right here underneath that hardware. So what that'll do is that'll actually cause that hardware to expand and actually lock the brake pad into the holder. Uh, so that can either make the brake pads not function uh, equally or it can cause them to, if somebody, let's say for example, somebody really piled on the brakes real hard, all of a sudden that pad that was frozen, that gets shoved in, goes against the brake order, now the pad won't release. Uh, so that can give a false symptom of, let's say like a frozen brake caliper or a bad brake hose. Uh, so it's very important that when you're doing this, that we clean up this area of the brake caliper bracket. Uh, here at the shop, we do so many brake jobs. Uh, what we have is we have a sandblasting cabinet. So we're gonna throw these in a blasting cabinet we're gonna blast off this whole area. What you'd wanna do at home, if you have access to a sandblaster, go ahead and use that. Um, if you don't, you're gonna to wanna to use a, a file, sandpaper, whatever you have to get the rust off the caliper bracket uh, while maintaining you know, the, the factory metal there. Uh, you don't wanna you know, grind it down to the point where you've actually changed the dimension of this, but basically just get the rust off. Now we've gone ahead and got our new pads. On this one, we're gonna use the wherever platinums I picked up down at Advance Auto. As I mentioned, buy a high quality pad that comes with brake hardware. If not, buy the brake hardware separate and always replace that. So let's have a look. So this was our inboard pad that we had before. And you can really see how that rust was uh, just grinding right down into there. Definitely is causing our noise. You can kind of compare that to the new pad. So definitely a difference there. I thought you'd like to see that. So what we're going to do is to prevent this, uh, and you can see that we've uh, gone and cleaned that up there on the sandblaster. We took and blasted those brackets clean, so they're just like new. Um, what, what we use here at the shop is uh, the stuff put out by Permatex. It's a brake caliper grease, and it's extreme. So uh, what we're going to do is just go ahead and uh, you're going to apply that to where those uh, where the brake hardware goes. So just go ahead and. and Make sure you coat all that fresh metal that you uh, just sandblasted off. And uh, this stuff clings quite well. I've, I've used this stuff for a lot of years here in the shop. Uh, probably, oh gosh, I've got to be going on about four years. I've actually, uh, I've actually used this three, at, at least, yeah, yeah, probably four years uh, to be realistic how long we've, we've used that. Uh, prior to that, we've used some different brands by Stay Lube and uh, CRC. And uh, I just find if you either get uh, get a good quality, this is a ceramic fortified stuff. Um, uh, we've used stuff that actually has Molly denim in it, and uh, that seems to work quite well, so it seems to hang on. So uh, just go ahead and coat your brake caliper where the hardware goes. Then we're just going to take our new hardware and stick it on right over top of the right over top of the greased part. And uh, like I say, what that. Uh, hopes to accomplish there is the fact that it'll slow down the rusting. Probably won't prevent it fully, uh, but definitely appears to slow it down to the point where we're going to get most of the usable life out of our brake pads before that rusts up again. Okay, so now that you have that done, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and slide in our outboard pad. So that's the one without the squealer. Um, now I guess I, I need to mention that you should never ever have to force a set of brake pads on. Uh, you should never have to tap them on with a hammer um, when you install them they should always be able to just move just nice and easy with your fingers. Um, never have to tap them. You never have to go over to the grinder and grind them or grind your bracket. Um, you know, if you do, either the pads are junk or, you know, something, something is wrong. Never ever force fit brake pads. Always make sure they move by hand. Um, so we've got our inside pad. That one has the brake squealer on it. So we're gonna mount that inboard. And, uh, you know, again, when we mount this, okay, oops, you got it a little tricky. You got to push the uh, brake hardware down, get the pad to slide in there. Well, spring them back out. But again, with the inboard pad, you should definitely be able to just move that pad 
just free and easy, you know, just with no problem. Should be able to just slide in that bracket. So that's how you do that. Now that we've got our, our bracket all loaded up and uh, ready to go, we're going to go over there and I'm going to show you how to put the brake rotor back on. And I guess another thing to mention is uh, make sure your hands aren't just, you know, covered and slobbered up with grease. You want to try to eliminate any kind of contamination on the friction material that you can. Okay, so you probably remember from just a couple seconds ago the, uh, the hard time we had getting this uh, brake rotor off the hub. Uh, what you want to do, or it's always been our habit here, because the vehicle's probably going to need brakes again sometimes throughout its usable life. We always put, uh, you can either use like an anti-seize, regular grease. Uh, we use this stuff put out by Castle, it's called Muscle Grease. Uh, it has it's an anti-seize fortified uh, high temperature spray grease. We just coat the face of the hub before we put the rotor back on to help, help it come off easier the next time. So that's all you need, whether you're using anesthesia or what, what you, uh, whatever you decide there. Uh, don't go hog wild with it. Don't slather it on there so thick it's going to be slinging out all over your brakes, but just enough to uh, stop that rust buildup. So then we got our uh, brake rotors down here to Vance Auto. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stick those on. Make sure you pay attention to where the, uh, the hole is there for your torque spit. And go ahead and stick that back in there. might want to put a little anti-seize on the threads on that too or make sure you get a little bit of that grease in the hole. And the other thing is, it's not really important that you uh, go on and just, you know, give this the beans, you know. Uh, this just basically helps with assembly. Once you put your tire on, uh, that's going to hold your brake rotor on. And to be honest with you, uh, most vehicles don't have these. You'll notice that your new brake rotors come coated with some real slimy stuff. Uh, it's a, you know, it's an oil product that they put on the uh, put on the brake rotors when they store them, keep them from rusting in the box. A couple options there. Pick yourself up a can of brake parts cleaner while you're at the uh, parts store getting your brake parts stuff. Or, uh, honestly, you can just wash these in the sink. Uh, before you put it on, uh, just use some Dawn dish soap. It cuts grease quite well. Dawn dish soap, hot water, stuff comes right off. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and after you have it hung on here, you know you're not going to have to handle it anymore. Just take your brake parts cleaner, start at the top, work your way around, you'll see all the uh, oil and stuff flow right off it. I'll usually spray some on a rag. At that point, just go around it, wipe off the surface, and that's about as good as it's gonna get. Uh, you'll find, again, oh, again, you know what, we'll do this to the inside surface too, but um, you poke around on the internet long enough, you'll find a million things of controversy on this, people flipping out, you know, proper way to clean it. This is what I've done, I've done lots of breaks. Never had an issue. Now we're going to go ahead and just install our brake caliper bracket. So just take that and just slip it over top of your new rotor that you've already got cleaned off. And go ahead and reinsert your bolts. If you'd like, go ahead and put some light Loctite on these, some like medium strength Loctite. And go ahead and put them in. If you want to torque them, the factory spec I think is 136 foot pounds. Uh, if you don't have a torque wrench, just go ahead and snug them down. You're going to want these. You're going to want these tight. Uh, you've seen how tight they were coming off. Definitely not something you want falling off. All right, now that you got your bracket on there, what you're going to want to do is use the same brake caliper lube that we used uh, just putting the brake hardware on. We're going to want to take our caliper that we've already got cleaned, and essentially you're going to want to lube anything that's going to be a metal-to-metal -metal surface. Now these pads that we bought already have a shim on them, uh, which is going to help reduce uh, noise. So what we're gonna do with our brake caliper grease, using it inside of our caliper here on the metal to metal contacts, we're gonna to try to do two things. We're gonna to try to uh, accomplish uh, stopping any, any kind of brake noise. Any kind of metal, anytime you have metal to metal contact, you can always have uh, noise, a squeal. Uh, so by greasing that, we're gonna eliminate that noise. And we're also, we're gonna prevent this from building up corrosion for future brake jobs. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just apply brake lube in there. And we're gonna make sure that we get Make sure that we get everything. Every, every surface that contacts the pad you're going to want to get. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. And the other area that you're going to want to get too is the face of these pistons because they also contact the inner pad. So uh, I guess I should just mention a couple ways you can do it. You can either apply the grease directly to the outside surface of the pad or do it like I do it and just do the, uh, do the brake caliper. Okay, after you feel that you've got a sufficient amount of lube on the inside of the caliper, let's go ahead and put it on. I'm going to show you how to do that without making a big mess. 
So just take your caliper and just start it up. Set it, set it upside down, just like this. And start it in your first upper caliper pin here. Before you do this, to have a look at your brake hose and make sure you don't have a have a pigtail in that and have that thing twisted around. So just get that bolt started. Now just take your caliper, and just swing it down, and you should be able to fit it right over your pads. Again, this is one of those things you don't ever have to force. Uh, never use a hammer, screwdriver. You never have to pry it on. Um, if it doesn't slide on easily, then something's wrong. Either your pistons are not pistons are not in all the way. You got a pad that's sticking out. You know something's wrong. So with uh, with brakes, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. And then make sure you go ahead and tighten those bolts down. All right, viewers. So that's it. Front brakes are pretty easy to do. Uh, you can definitely do them yourself. You don't need a whole lot of special tools. Getting the rotor off can be kind of tricky, but if the old one's junk, who cares? Just beat it off. Uh, you know you won't you won't damage anything. I guess one thing to mention: if you are back there wailing on the rotor, make sure you got your car jacked up, supported on jack stands. Good. Probably ought to put on a pair of safety glasses, maybe a pair of earmuffs. And don't hit the ears that hold the brake caliper bracket on. If you hit those and bend those, or break those in this case because they're aluminum, it'll be a bad day for you. You'll be down replacing the whole spindle. Uh, so that'll suck. Um, if this was the uh, end of the line for you and you're all done, you don't need to do your back brakes, go ahead and put your tire and wheel assembly back on. When you get inside the vehicle, make sure you pump up the brakes. If not, you're going to go for a hell of a ride back down your driveway. Uh, so go ahead and pump up your brakes till they're hard. And it's as simple as that. Uh, there is a brake pad break-in procedure. Uh, you'll find 50,000 different ways to do that. Uh, so go ahead and check that out online. I won't bore you with the details of, of my thoughts on that. So uh, if this is the end of the road, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you like the video. We're going to go on and continue on, and I'm going to show you how to do the rear disc. All right, viewers, we're here on the back. Pretty much the same as the front, you're going to need a lot of the same tools. We're going to start taking the caliper bracket off. It's going to use a 14 millimeter, just like it did on the front. So go ahead and remove those two bolts that hold the brake caliper on. And we're going to remove the brake caliper. Now that's going to come off in the same fashion as it did on the front. Just going to want to go ahead and just wiggle it up off there. Shouldn't come off hard. Or we're probably real hard to get this off. If it's giving you a hard time, I'll have to use a little something a little smaller. Grab a screwdriver, you can stick it in there right up against the edge of the rotor. Just kind of pry it towards you a little bit like this. It's going to allow that piston to go back in on that caliper. It's going to let you just take it right off, no problem. No worry about setting this, uh, hanging that up. You can just set that right back on the brake caliper, or on the uh, control arm there. We're going to want to remove our caliper bracket. It's going to take a 15 millimeter. These are going to be pretty tight. This is going to be just like the front. These are going to be uh, Loctited on. So they may take a little more effort. Might uh, have to wrench those down all the way to the end. So go ahead and get those broke loose. I'm going to grab a ratchet wrench and pull them out the rest of the way. Good little tool. If you don't have any, you should get some. See them on sale all the time, like down at Van Sauter, you get like the gear wrench brand. Usually a five or six piece set of uh, metrics and standards. Uh, so you got your uh, caliper bracket off. You can take and uh, knock the pads out of that. It's probably be stuck in there pretty good. So use a hammer or whatever handle, wherever you got a hand. So get those beat out of there. So you can see, real similar to the front. You can see where that uh, rotor there must have a lot of rust on the inside, grinding, the, grinding right into the edge of those pads. So I can imagine this is where you know a great deal of this noise was coming from. So definitely time to fix this. Okay, just like the front, we've got the uh, uh, retaining screw here on the brake rotor. It's going to take our T30 Torx bit. So let's see if we can just get this one with a screwdriver. Yep, that one comes right out. Go ahead and spin that right out of there. Now you're going to notice something a little different here. Roll this around so you can see it. Uh, let's see where I go. Get back here where you can see. See that little rubber plug right there? We are going to take and pop that out also. Just use a little screwdriver, pick, or whatever you have. Go ahead and pull that out. Just a little rubber plug there. 
Now, the reason that we had to do that is because we have to remove the rotor. Inside of this brake rotor is a set of brake shoes. That's your parking brake. So there's gonna be an adjuster in there. Let's see if we can't find it. Okay, it's right here at the top. So we're gonna to have to back the adjustment all the way off on this. Now, whatever way you think it needs to go, turn it the opposite. That's usually the way it works out. So I'm gonna take and start spinning this in a downward position. Okay. Well, it quit turning. Can't see any more threads on it anymore. So at this point, I gotta believe the brake adjuster is backed all the way off. Now, once I get this rotor off, I'll give you a little closer look at, at uh, what I just did there so you can kind of see it. All right. Now, at this point, we're gonna use the air hammer again. But again, you can use just a regular ball peen hammer. Go ahead and hit it between the wheel studs, you know, bang on it, bang on the back side of it. You know, whatever you got to do to release it to the hub, I'm assuming it's probably going to be stuck. So I'm going to use the air hammer. Didn't appear to be stuck near as bad as the front. Should be able to wiggle it right off. No problem. Look at the rust build up on the inside of this one. So. Pretty heavy duty. I've seen a hundred times worse, but uh, obviously it was causing some noise issues. Okay, so here is what I was just turning. Let me grab a pry bar here. This is our star adjuster for the uh, parking brake shoes. So I was just flicking it from the top down to release it. So when we put the new rotor on, we're gonna be turning it in this fashion. So that's how that rotates, if you can kind of get the gist of that. So that's actually expanding the brake shoes at this point. So kind of give you an idea of what I was doing. Harder, easier to see it than it is to explain it. Once you have your brake rotor off, just go ahead and inspect these parking brake shoes. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that they are not falling off. The friction material is not falling off the backing plate. So usually if it is, you'll see big air gaps on it. When you grab the uh, brake shoes with your fingers, you'll be able to flick them right off. Um, let's see, where's that one right there? So. Those ones actually appear pretty tight. I'm gonna grab some brake parts cleaner. I'm gonna spray off all the brake dust on these brake shoes. I'm gonna give the uh, brake adjuster and this little mechanism down here, uh, th that's the uh, activator that when you pull your parking brake cable, uh, this parking brake actuator expands, expanding the parking brake shoes and making your parking brake work. So uh, probably more on that on a later video if we ever do some parking brake shoes, show you how that works. Uh, so we're gonna clean that all off and uh, blow it all off and then uh, start putting this thing back together. All right, well, we've got our parking brake shoes cleaned off there. That's no problem. We're gonna wanna do just like we did out in front. We need to get our brake caliper, brake caliper prepared uh, to be reinstalled. Uh, so what we wanna do, uh, again, you know, if there's big chunks of rust on the piston, if there is big chunks of rust on the, uh, on the ears on the brake caliper here, uh, here and here, uh, you'd want to use, you know, whatever you have to get those big chunks of rust off. This one appears to be just kind of, you know, flash rusted, I guess if you would say. Uh, just a little bit of light surface rust. So we're just going to use just some steel brush, just like we did on the front. Just go ahead and get a lot of that trash off there. Same thing on the piston. We're just going to clean that piston face off. Get a lot of that junk off there. Just, you know, just the brake dust and, and rust and dirt and stuff in general. Just go ahead and clean that off. You'll find when you're doing brake jobs, you're probably going to use lots of brake parts cleaner. Okay, before we get too far, we want to take and push our piston back in. Again, a bunch of different ways to do it. You can use a C-clamp, the right way to do it. Uh, you know, a perfect world without rust and salt. Open the bleeder, push it in, close the bleeder, you know, reinstall your brakes. Um, you know, I guess I'll say again, you know, just like I said on the front, I've pushed these things in thousands of times. I've never, ever had a problem. Now that I say that, at some point it might bite me, but uh, until this point it hasn't. Uh, we're gonna use a tool very similar. This is what we used on the front for a dual piston. Um, I have one that is very similar to that, that is used for a single piston. Uh, you can use C-clamp, you can use vice grips, use whatever you like to go ahead and push that in. Whatever you use, 
It should push in very easily, just like that. That was pushed right in. Piece of cake. So now that we have that done, we are gonna take our bracket, peel our hardware off it, and do just like we did on the front. We're gonna go over, sandblast the bracket off. You can use whatever means you have to clean the rust off that. Uh, get it polished up and get it ready for the new pads. All right, we made it back with our caliper bracket. You can see that is nice and shiny. The rust has been removed. If you've watched this whole video, you've seen that, uh, you know, on the front we went through and we checked our caliper pins. Equally important on the back, did the same thing. Uh, again, you know, don't over lube them. We're gonna be using our brake caliper lube, just like we did on the front. So really not a whole lot of difference back here, other than the fact we've got some parking brake shoes. So we're gonna go ahead and put a pretty fair amount of lube on those. You know, again, you don't have to overdo it, but you definitely want them coated all the way, trying to prevent uh, rust. All right, now that you uh, are confident that you've got those lube properly, just like on the front, we've got our new brake caliper hardware. I want to go ahead and install that. It should snap on real easy. All right, now that we've got that installed, we're going to go ahead and grab our new brake pads. We've got those, and again, you know, it's a good point to uh, clean your little patties. You don't want to uh, want to make a mess on these new pads. So we're putting the same thing on the back that we put on the front. It's the wherever platinum. So we've got an advanced auto. We're going to do your outboard pad first. So this is the pad that goes on the outside. Now these are a little trickier, they're a little smaller to deal with, uh, but again, just like on the front, you don't want to have to force these on. Once you get them in the bracket, you should easily be able to move them, you know, in an up and down fashion on the bracket. You know, both sides should be able to just slip right through the holsters. It's kind of hard to see, I don't want to pop it back off, but you know, your pad should move freely and easily in there. Uh, without any any issues. You don't want to get a hammer and have to smash it in there. So now you've got the outboard pad on. You're going to put your inboard pad. That is the one with the squealer. Uh, that's, a, that's how these are supposed to be from the factory. So we're going to slip that on our bracket here. And again, can't stress enough the fact that when these go on, they, they need to be able to move freely. And uh, let's get where I can hang on to this thing. You know, you should be able to move that pad up and down on that hardware without any, any problems, any obstructions. So can't stress that enough. If you don't do that, it causes all kinds of problems. So, sprayed a little bit of anti-seize on the face of the hub, just like we did in the uh, front. I'm gonna go one step extra. Got a little spray loop here, stuff we uh, use here in the shop quite often called fluid film. I sprayed some on top of that uh, brake adjuster. And then again, down on the actuator, down on the bottom. I don't want to keep that stuff from seeping up, especially around right here. Now take your new rotor that you have, and we're going to want to clean the oil on the inside of the uh, brake rotor there on the drum portion. So I'm going to use a little, little brake parts cleaner. I'm going to spray it around in there. You can use a rag. Just kind of wipe that out. That way we don't contaminate our shoes with oil. I'm going to find out where the hole is. Line that up, that should slide on nice and easy. Get your torque screw that you took out of it. Go ahead and put that in. Now you don't have to kill that, remember. And then, what we want to do is we've got to readjust our parking brake. So we're going to find our star wheel. We're going to turn that completely opposite that we did. So we're going to be flicking it essentially from the bottom to the top. We're going to go until it's tight. We can't move that rotor. I'll just reach in there, back it off three or four clicks. That moves nice and freely now, no problem. That ensures that our brake shoes have come all the way out, they've seated against the drum, and they're adjusted properly. Put your rubber adjuster back in. Just like we did on the front, we're going to want to clean our rotor. Now you could have done this prior to installing it. You could have done it in the uh, hot soapy water, like I say, you know, if you didn't want to waste a bunch of brake parts cleaner. 
Um, you know, whatever your thoughts are on that. More people will argue with you about how you clean a brake rotor than what even seems right. And it seems kind of silly to me. Get the oil off it. Pretty much is the main objective. I don't care if you lick it off, you wipe it off. You know, however, however, wherever the case may be, I usually so you just just clean it off. You know, like I say, some people get pretty sensitive about it. I don't know uh, what the big obsession with it is. You know, so we get them we get them cleaned up. Just, just clean them up. Bottom line. All right, now that that's done. You will take your caliper bracket that you have already loaded with the pads. And we're going to stick it right back on the brake rotor. At this point, we don't have to touch anything with our hands. Uh, you know, just make it a habit not to transfer a lot of grease onto the pads and onto the rotor itself. So we're going to take and stick our bolts back in there. I don't have the torque spec on these. I'll have to go look it up. Uh, but if you're doing it yourself, you know, you got a torque wrench. I assume if you do, you're probably not looking at YouTube on how to replace your brakes, but uh, you can put a little Loctite on these, put them in, snug them up tight. That's the uh, main objective there. So I'll go look up that torque spec, come back and tell you what it is, just in case you are doing that. All right, I went ahead and looked that up. That is supposed to be torqued at 89 foot-pounds uh, using a medium strength Loctite. Use your, uh, use your judgment on that. I won't, uh, won't be able to judge you either way. So. Around here, things usually rust together, so in New York State, we've got kind of Loctite on everything. <laughs> so, uh, just like we did on the front, we're going to take our caliper here, make sure we don't have any pigtails in it. We're going to lube up anything that has a metal to metal contact, which this is exactly like the front. We got the two ears on the brake caliper, and we actually have the uh, piston itself. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and just kind of stick some lube on those again to uh, prevent rust. And to also prevent brake noise. Um, it's a pretty common misconception when people, uh, people most often think that brake noise comes between the pad and the rotor when, when quite often, I, I don't know the percentage, but uh, I would say equally as much it comes from the, between the pad and the actual caliper itself. So, um, you know, if you have a chronic problem with a set of brake pads that are always squealing, a lot of times you remove them, you lube the brake hardware, loop the caliper between the caliper and the pad, and quite often that'll, that'll uh, uh, reduce or solve all your uh, braking problems as far as noise is concerned. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to buy a good quality pad, a pad that is shimmed, which will also help reduce noise. So, um, it's kind of, brake pads are kind of a, you get what you pay for type thing. All right, just like on the front, we're gonna take our brake caliper without getting a lot of crap on everything. You're gonna hold it in the upright position like this. Make, you know, make sure your hose isn't all kinked up. We're gonna start one caliper bolt. We're gonna take our caliper and just swing it right down over our pads. That's the easiest way to do it. You can use that on a lot of different applications instead of trying to you know, set it down on there. I'm gonna take these bolts. We're gonna find a wrench that fits them. We're gonna get quite a pile of stuff over here. <laughs> take our 14 mil. Go ahead and snug those up. Torque them to spec, whatever your uh, preference is there. And that's it. That is how you do a four wheel brake job on your Suzuki XL7 or just about anything. Um, disc brake pads or disc brakes are, are very similar. As you've seen, they're very similar front to back. Um, some things you'll run into in the rear is parking brake shoes. It can be a little difficult. Sometimes the actual rotor can be stuck on there regardless if you've backed the adjuster off or, or whatever, what have you there. Um, sometimes you can have screw-in pistons in the rear, so that's a, that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother uh, video there in itself. Um, but that's it. Do the same thing on the opposite side. Do the front, do the back. Definitely do it yourself. Probably gonna take you a few hours. You don't really need any special tools. The air hammer definitely helps. You know, that's what we have in here in the shop. You know, if I do them at home or uh, back when I used to do a lot of side work when I worked, uh, you know, I just always you know, beat them off with a hammer. You know, it's just what you got to do. So, uh, hope you liked it. If you've made it this far, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Leave us uh, comments in your comment box. Check us out on Facebook. I just ask that you subscribe to our channel. We put videos on here almost daily, uh, just uh, stuff we do in the shop. So, if you're interested in that stuff, just go ahead and subscribe and we'll send it right to your, uh, right to your main page here on YouTube. So, thanks for watching.